welcome you to our 223rd show of ThinkHack Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live from two different uh, locations in the world, from Long Beach, California, with architect Ron Lindgren. Hi, Ron. Hello, Martin. Nice to see you. Yeah, good to have you back, Ron. And myself, wouldn't you wish so, from Munich in Germany. And so uh, last week was uh, Thanksgiving, so we were thanking all the good things in life and uh, also the people that we're blessed to have around us. And today we also want to remember people who we had just uh, recently lost. And if we can get to the first slide, uh, that is Bob Liljestrand, who is uh, filmmaker and architect and historian and we all remember him for his lifetime project of preserving his family home, the Lillistrand House, which is up on Tantalus in Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, Bob just recently passed away and we uh, most obviously dearly miss you. There's a great uh, article uh, in the Star Advertiser that we, show, uh, that we quote up there. And also what we show quote here is that Bob had been one of the earliest uh, doing a show here on this program, which you can see has accumulated quite some views and quite some likes, uh, not surprisingly, the great guy that uh, Bob was and for us and our memories will always be. So we dearly miss you, Bob. And uh, on your side, Ron, uh, let's get us to the next slide. Uh, there is a gentleman related to uh, this episode and the ones we're on currently that you dearly miss and just have uh, have lost. Yes, uh, Ray Shigeta, the former project superintendent with Hawaiian Dredging uh, General Contractors, had contacted me just recently to, to mention that uh, of the passing of Ken Mizuno, whose pictures appear on, on the screen, uh, I first got to know Ken back in 1983 uh, while the Holly Kalani was under construction. He was a new employee. He was the trusted and direct uh, contact between uh, the president of what was the Holly Kalani Corporation. At that time, that Japanese corporation was in the process of building the Holly Kalani Hotel. And so uh, Ken was the go-between between Chuhei Okuda the president, his architect, myself, the general contractor, and any number of other designers and people and government uh, uh, law, law people about the use of the land and so forth. With the hotel's opening in 1984, he started a 37-year career uh, with the Holly Clooney. And he was the hotel's, what I call, his, the engineering manager. Some people say he was he was uh, chief engineer, but that that doesn't cover what he really did. He led a crew absolutely responsible for successfully maintaining all of the utilities, the machinery, the technologies that are necessary to keep a hotel going. And only with all of that working smoothly could the Holly Clowney employees then provide the very finest in hotel service, which which they certainly have to their great credit. But also, every time I came to Hawaii, I was always amazed by what the hotel looked like because he ensured that the hotel exterior and the landscape grounds always looked wonderfully maintained, bright, crisp, and just as new looking as the day the hotel had opened. But also, over those years, he was again the contact between the Holly Clinic Corporation and all of the people involved in those necessary refreshing of hotel properties that can take, you know, between seven and 10 years, sometimes less. If a hotel gets really beaten up, sometimes its success means that it has to be refreshed sooner. Uh, and uh, that included the, uh, the renovation of the 450 room Holly Kalani, plus the 300 rooms across the street in the sister hotel, which at that time was the Waikiki Park. And only very recently, was he working uh, on a very major renovation of the Waikiki Park into the Waikiki Hale Puna Hotel. And every time he was involved, he, he could show a really encyclopedic knowledge of, of construction. He was the man who knew 
how a hotel operated in terms of, again, uh, all of, of the, util the utilities and things to keep things moving smoothly and for the guests to have the finest experience they possibly could. And he was always very diplomatic and fair, which wasn't always the experience I had with dealings with some clients reps. He was always a welcoming, very steadying influence uh, because sometimes remodeling a hotel can be fraught with a lot of conflict. Uh, I think, in my opinion, that Ken Mizuno deserves a great deal of credit uh, of the well-deserved success that the Hale Kalani has achieved, both now in Hawaii and in Okinawa. Uh, and that was immensely assisted by the very wise, the untiring, and the fully committed efforts of the late Ken Mizuno. Now, I got to know him so well because we shared a common, a common bond. And that would be that we were both hoping to help in our own way uh, to establish that Hale Klani uh, brand as a, a really unmistakable presence in the competitive world of modern worldwide tropical hospitality. So I'm so grateful to be able to offer my sincere condolences to the family. It's a great sorrow that he won't be joining them on his beloved ski slopes this season. Thank you, Ron, much appreciated. Um, and uh, let's go to the next slide because thanks to you, Ron, uh, even I had a chance uh, to, uh, to get to know uh, Ken. And that was the situation that we see at the very bottom right here. That thanks, Michael, for zooming in and uh, Ron share with us when that was and what that was. When I was in Hawaii uh, during the Dokumomo conference, I had called Ken uh, Mizuno and asked if there was a chance that we might have the opportunity of uh, getting a, a short tour of the very major renovation that was happening at the Waikiki Park Hotel. It was such an interest to me because I was the schematic design architect for the hotel and the general layout, original layout and the room designs and so forth were in my hands and with, uh, uh, at, but only so far as, as schematics, uh, fine, local Hawaiian architectural firm took over and did a great job with the, with the hotel. Ken uh, typically was so kind and thoughtful that despite his busy schedule, I was long retired, uh, he arranged to, to give a tour both to myself, to Martin, and to one of my colleagues whom I think Martin met for the first time that day, an architect named Carolyn Allardyce, who has been involved with the Kahala Hilton and in architecture and in uh, city planning and governmental positions for uh, almost four decades in Honolulu. She still has an office there. That's, that's Ken with his back to us to the right. We're walking through the empty uh, lobby space at the ground floor. Uh, and this was a day or two before all of the furniture would have arrived. And that's such a busy time when everybody's running around pushing furniture around an inch here, an inch there, oops, that didn't work. Let's get rid of that piece of furniture completely. The kind of experience I've had in the past. Uh, and yet he made the time and uh, he, the, the, the public space below was, was hermetic and sealed. But of course, my lobby design originally was also hermetic and sealed. Uh, but my first impression was that there was there was kind of a slickness and an urbanity to it. And sure, we're in urban Waikiki, but it was again a bit characterless. That's that's partly unfair because it's amazing what can happen when furniture and fic and fixtures and things uh, fall into place. And we didn't have that opportunity. But uh, Martin, you had some strong comments about uh, what you see in the upper right uh, of the slide. Yeah, we, we do, and uh, turn it to, a, to a, a good angle, I think, or to a more optimistic angle here. Again, we, we miss Ken, and we also miss the, the easy breeziness of your uh, Hali Kalani just across the street with the lobby and the common areas all being open to the elements, which are always summer uh, in Hawaii. So that's the way one would want it to see 
And maybe before we go into the detail of our uh, criticism, well, we can go there right away. Yeah? If you go to the top right, which you point out, Ron, this is all, we've been talking about that before. This is a show quote when you gave uh, three shows about your Halekalani. And we ended up also walking over to the Halepuna here. And this sort of collage shows what appears to be in blue in the middle is actually the new fenestration, the new glazing they put in. And the one to the left of that one is the original one. And uh, the, the indigenous guy there in his loincloth is sort of an, an analogy of um, your what, what you had uh, implemented there. And maybe uh, please talk about the difference, Ron. Yes, the, the original design uh, allowed for uh, almost all the glass itself to open, especially uh, a, a, a sort of short side panel floor to ceiling of, of, uh, of some, op some operable glass. What that meant was that uh, taking advantage of the breeze uh, by, be, by being able to, to have the, the breeze or the wind or the trade winds to come directly into the room, added to the fact that there was this sort of side panel as well, meant that in a breeze, a sort of vortex was created at the far end of the room which helped to cool the room, cool the glass, cool the, the guest room, uh, uh, cool the guests in the room. And in the new design, uh, it's much more fixed. There's a very large fixed panel uh, that we'll see the interior view of soon. And the opportunity to open things up, turn off the air conditioning and enjoy the breeze and to hear the, uh, the, the sound of the ocean waves just not far apart, not far away, uh, is lost. And I must say that after having lived in one of the rooms when it was still the Waikiki Park, that the ability to open as much of the glass as possible at the end wall did in fact allow me to wake up on a Sunday morning and, uh, and hear not the sound of the air conditioning and not being frozen in the room, but the, so the sound of, uh, the ocean waves. Yeah, and given that, uh, let's argue that uh, given the uh, substance, uh, the substantial quality of your schematic design, uh, that your uh, Halepuna did something recently. You were you were kind of racing with yourself in in a sprint in a contest. And we should first point out to the very uh, top, uh, second from top left, uh, which is a show quote uh, that we have uh, been sharing with the audience that little while ago, which is actually a national ranking uh, of uh, resorts in the world. And uh, you please recall and, and read, uh, Ron, the, the, the four top ones. Yeah, uh, we were wonderfully surprised in the Condé Nast Traveler magazine, which is one of the American magazines that, that uh, many committed travelers uh, uh, get in their mail once a month. When they selected the 20 hotels uh, that they felt were the best in the world as resort hotels, uh, Holly Klani led uh, the list. In fact, it did for several years. The other three, I really forget the order, but they were all out of the Killingsworth office. It was the Manolani Hotel, the Kapalua Bay Hotel, which is much missed, and the Kahala Hilton. Uh, and, and this was a great surprise and made us realize that we were doing something right in the world of Hawaiian hospitality. And that, Ron, is ongoing because it's the most recent issue of that same magazine, which we're quoting at the very bottom left, which is now, the last one was top 20. This one here is top 10 of Hawaii uh, hotels. Guess what? We see that in that second from the left column there, you basically surpassed yourself relative to the, to the, uh, to the, to the other recent, uh, the other previous ranking, which was, by the way, from the early 90s. That's how long it lasts. Um, now, uh, number one is the Hale Puna. And number three is the Hale Kalani, is your Hale Kalani, both designed by you. And then number four is the Kahala, which is by your boss and friend and colleague and business partner, Edward Killingsworth. And that was his inaugural 
project there that you're also very familiar with because you just uh, recall that you were renovating it. So the last great substantial renovation was done by you. So congratulations, Ron. Once again, you keep your, your high ranking top scoring here at uh, pole positions. And um, we don't- Thank you, that's, not... that, that, that's something that uh, I'm really proud of. And yeah. I must say that when, uh, when people choose uh, these lists, uh, of course, as, as each year passes, uh, there, there is such a thing as, as the new kid on the block, which suddenly gets a lot of attention. Uh, the, the problem I have with lists like this is that, for example, if you're dealing with a very high-end luxury hotel, very expensive to stay at uh, for its guest experience and its tropical elegant experience, uh, that isn't necessarily the same animal uh, as a hotel that still provides wonderful service uh, and is you know, right, right almost on the ocean as well at uh, sometimes considerably lower rates. It's a little bit like uh, the apples and oranges problem, but that doesn't, uh, uh, that doesn't at all diminish my pride in the fact that uh, what began as a schematic design by myself and then was taken to fruition by a terrific architectural firm in Hawaii, for which I'm now apologizing to because I can't remember their name after all these years, uh, but that it should be listed in Condé Nast Traveler again as the number one hotel in uh, Hawaii. Yeah. And adding to that feel of well-deserved of pride, um, uh, Ron, uh, as we said, these are the Hawaii, the 10 best on Hawaii, and all of these, the top four ones, are actually on our island of Oahu. And we know there are other pretty islands that you have been designing on, the Kapalua Bay that you mentioned that unfortunately isn't anymore because they stupidly tore it down and even more stupidly replaced it with something rather hideous. But all the four ones here are actually on Oahu, and all the three first ones are actually in Waikiki, which is my and DeSoto's hood. And so, you know, we're very proud of that, Ron, that you blessed us with that one. And so just so you might wonder what the position number two is, it's actually uh, something that uh, we're personally architecturally not that uh, equally fond of because it's rather hermetic and enclosed uh, is the Waikiki Prince Hotel, but uh, the 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 picture there, the show quote in the in the in the in the top left with Kaili Chun reminds us of this beautiful piece of artwork that she placed into the lobby of the Hotel Prince that indeed gives it a very tropical exotic uh, feel and touch and has a lot of multi layered sophistication in it. And so I, I would say, given that, uh, Ron, uh, you just uh, reminded us of what our exotic escapism expert, Susanna, reminds us of that remodeling interval of seven to 10 years, which you also reiterated. And I would say being that, that in the last show, you promised to be around for many more years. I would suggest uh, you and Kaili being the team for the next uh, uh, remodeling phase of the Hale Puna first to begin with. And I can certainly see there will be sort of a, a revisiting of some of the uh, features that we um, started talk about um, at the top right. And let's go to the next slide because that's where we continue that talk. Um, just to, um, again, illustrate the very top left uh, show quote is um, illustrating the, the year that you, Ron, uh, when you were, as you brought us back to the Kahala and you told us all the details about your remodeling of it, um, at that time, you were basically um, staying at the Waikiki Park Hotel that we see the contemporary interior after the remodeling. And you were staying there for almost a year and I'm also amazed that just like Jay, our uh, uncle, uh, founding uncle, um, is a pioneer in, in the bicycling um, um, uh, culture in Hawaii, you have been part of that because you were doing this with your bicycle, the commute from, the, from Waikiki up to 
Kahala. And if you have been driving that, maybe you don't feel the incline, but I can tell you I've been there on my bicycle a few times and it's a lot. So kudos to you. Uh, you did it the post-fossil way back then. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and, and I must say that uh, I would start the day uh, early enough to jump on my bike from the Waikiki Park and then uh, fight my way up the hill and stop at uh, the lighthouse just as the sun was breaking over the horizon. And then I would just stop there, take uh, deep breaths, and from there I could coast all, almost all the rest of the way down to the Kahala. It was a, a wonderful work experience and it always uh, uh, brought out the best in me for the work day that followed. Exactly. And at the bottom there, we see the, the, the updated, uh, although I, I don't think that term <laughs> gives it the right connotation there. And you see what's on the very left, that fixed panel used to be a sliding door pair. So what you've been illustrating, we created the term of side ventilation is what, what and you said there was this vortex sort of uh, vent dynamics going on that helped you to naturally equal your space. That's not the case anymore. That's fixed glazing. It's flush with a facade that's facing west. So the sun is coming in there uh, without um, you know, any um, mercy. And so um, again, I, I would say in about seven to eight years, you and Kaili uh, come back and bring it back. And maybe you consult, uh, please, uh, Michael, zoom in up the very top right with Tropicure Rockwood, who has been with his emerging generation offering this uh, elective where you had the students investigate and actually prototype, as you can see there, new tropical fenestrations. And as you said, you know, in preparation for the show, Ron, that, you know, the remodeling was taking away a, a bioclimatic um, um, aspect, performance aspect of, of, your, of your design. I guess then it's uh, it's obvious to want to bring that back. So in, in about, again, the next interval, I can see Kaili, David, and you teaming up and doing that. Um, again, I'm, I choose the permanent background uh, for the show to be our PI mobile, our 560 SL Mercedes. And we have to, I have to correct myself from two shows ago. I was saying when we were talking about this, the kind of the, the delicate, um, aspect of decadency that has to do with the zeitgeist of these projects that you were in in the mid 80s, uh, that uh, it wasn't J.R. Uh, Ewing driving these in the TV series Dallas, but it was Bobby Ewing, his younger brother. And also the model number isn't R102, which I still under my cold as my poor excuse uh, was saying, but it's the R107. So at least we got these correct uh, as well. Anything you want to add to our observation and projection and suggestion for the future, Ron, regarding the Halepuna? Uh, it's nice Waikiki to have reasons. It's nice to have reasons uh, to live for uh, at least another decade. But I do have to. Uh, I do have a criticism of what, uh, again, the new room appears like. You are seeing the ocean off in the distance, and those guest rooms that do. Uh, look out over the lowest wing of the Hale Klani, and many of them do, uh, of a building, a square building that has views in four different directions, four cardinal points. Take, again, Photoshop that ocean away, and the room, again, has no touch of the tropics in my mind. Uh, it's cool and bright and airy and perhaps even a little bit overly sunny on certain occasions in that Western sun coming through uh, the large fixed glass pane. But just as I have a, a problem with the non-contextuality of the Hale Klani's new room, this room made me make a comment to Ken Mizuno himself when uh, all four of us were in the room at the time. I said, the room is certainly comfortable and, and handsome, and it, but it looks like it might have been designed by a, uh, an interior designer from New York. And then I, I, I think it's true now that we have discovered that indeed it was an interior designer from New York. And Absolutely. Uh, my rule for 
choosing interior designers over my career was that obviously they had to have the talent and that talent could be in New York. Uh, I've worked with some interior designers from New York, but those interior designers also had experience and had already done projects in Hawaii. Who knows if this New York designer had ever even been to Hawaii? Uh, and sometimes that's certainly the case. The hubris of a, of a design firm not even visiting the site to see what the light conditions might be like, or what the room really appears like in its original form, how it could indeed be improved, because there are always room for improvement. Kim Mizuno took the comment uh, lightly. He probably had some input in terms of some of the technical aspects of the room in the bathrooms and maybe in, in where uh, the new power outlets might be put in case the lighting design for the room had changed somewhat. But the design was, was Holoclony management and Kim had no control over that. But uh, he just smiled and let me make that comment and was the gentleman that I knew the whole time I knew him. So again, bless his memory. Absolutely, Ron. And I think that uh, couldn't be a better closing note. I don't think there is anything uh, better to add to that. So I think we concluded here, given the circumstances. And uh, we, but we will see you back next week, Ron. Um, and um, again, the secret working title of this uh, volumes of show is the water reasons, uh, water happenings for reasons. And so uh, this will actually get us back to your home in Long Beach, California, and sharing your very turbulent last couple of months that you're very happy to have uh, been concluding now. And so what that will be in detail, we won't tell you here because otherwise you might not want to join us next week. And that's we for sure <laughs> want. So uh, look forward All to All I can seeing. say is that no matter what you go through, if, uh, if you get through it, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. <laughs> I know. You're living ex another living example for that, Ron. <laughs> Okay, so with that, um, see you next week. And you guys all stay as tropical exotic as Ron continues to encourage us. So with that, see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.